Good evening. Good evening and welcome to um, Talking Songs of Mira Owen Jones. Um, so it's the first one I've done for a couple of weeks. It's not been a, a great month. The, the year hasn't started off very well. Um, a couple of people called off from COVID. Um, I'm not being so good myself. Um, but we're back. We're back. And um, just to make it something special tonight, we've got two people rather both, as opposed to one. So there you go. It's an extra bonus for you. Um, but um, before we come to that, um, I'll play a song. And um, I feel that this is a this is a sort of um, it's a seamless seamless connection this to the next song. This is called New Start, New Day because I think it is a bit of a new start for us. And, um, it goes as they say a bit like this. Waking every morning, such a scary thing for me. Afraid to see the empty space, the one where you used to be. Come down to breakfast, no appetite for food. Make a pot of coffee, realize I made enough for two. I'm looking for a new start, looking for a new day. Looking for something that will take my breath away. I'm looking for a new start. Looking for a new day. Looking for something that will take my breath away. I pick up a paper, catch the bus. No particular hurry, nothing matters very much. Find my way without thinking. Arrive at my desk. Like I said, nothing matters much. I just couldn't care less. I'm looking for a new start. Looking for a new day. Looking for something that will take my breath away. I'm looking for a new start. Looking for a new day. Looking for something that will take my breath away. Eat a burger on my own. Now lunch times ain't much fun. Watching couples holding hands. Remember when we were one? Stay late at the office. It's easier that way. Forget all me to cry myself to sleep. Just another perfect day. I'm looking for a new start. For a new day, I'm looking for something that will take my breath away. I'm looking for a new start, looking for a new day. I'm looking for something that will take my breath away. I know that I can't go on living my life this way. No rhyme, no reason. Just an endless day to day. Something gonna have to change. I'm gonna have to change something in me. But please don't say those words. I hate that there's plenty more fish in the sea. Looking for a new start. Looking for a new day. Looking for something that will take my breath away. I'm looking for a new start. Looking for a new day. Day. Looking for something that will take, 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 take my breath away. Take my breath away. Take my breath away. Yes, I uh, actually got a lot of air playing um, Warsaw for some reason. That I've got no idea why. Um, but there you go. You can't complain. So, as I say, this week I've got something a bit special, something a bit different. And um, I've got a couple of guys in the studio here. And well, when I say here, they're actually in Liverpool, but it's metaphorically saying here. And um, from a band called Bayana. Now, this is a band I knew nothing about until about three or four months ago when I saw something about them. 
and they, they seem to be making a bit of a buzz for themselves, which is excellent. They've got the um, they had a record of the week on uh, jazz and funk radio, and they're on the Jazz FM playlist with a um, Saudade Samba, I think it's pronounced. I think that's right. I'm sure they'll correct me if it's wrong. So I'd like you to welcome, you can clap, cheer, whistle, whoop, whatever you fancy doing. Um, welcome with us um, in the studio, Laura and Mickey. Laura and Mickey, speak to me. Um, Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing, guys? Well, How are we feeling good? Like the, um, like we're on the Eurovision Song Contest here. Good <laughs> evening, no, Liverpool. Yeah, like, exactly. We are ready for your points. <laughs> okay. I would just wait. I hope we don't get the no. Excuse me. I'm going to have to turn my head. For, I think I've got them on back to front or something, other because I've got them. I seem to be tangled up in them. <laughs> Hang on a sec. Ah, that's much more comfortable. So, that, right, this this single of yours. Now, you, you've been out filming today, haven't you? What were you? What was it like? Yeah, we did um, the music video today for yeah. Saudade Samba. Yeah. And it was a bit like The Apprentice. I was trying to get it all together. But at the 11th hour, we pulled it together. It's got Mickey looking like the man from Del Monte. We've got Valentino on congas and samba dancers and beautiful salsa dancers. And it's we absolutely can't wait to see it ourselves because brilliant, brilliant. what we saw in the rushes today looked sumptuous <laughs> great no, i love the bed borrowed it. steel for the set <laughs> so it's laurel laurel's running around at the last minute borrowing palm trees and you know as you do so well didn't you, didn't you have any just, palm trees left over from the other one because i saw you using palm trees on the other one that i saw Where no they, were... they've been there uh, <laughs> I was like one of the seven dwarfs yesterday. My hole, my hole. Excellent. With palm trees on my back and, and a, and a can I ask, van bombing around the northwest. Yeah, I, can I ask you? You are actually in Liverpool, aren't you? So it's not exactly, you know, Caribbean sort of temperature not over there. It's about, it's about minus not 10 not in Manchester. So it's probably the similar temperature over there. So are you, are you in the studio all day then, yeah? We actually filmed it in the Hope Street Hotel. Yeah. So that's a, a beautiful hotel in the Ge Georgian Quarter in, in Liverpool. Yeah. So we took over the whole of the basement and it just, we felt like, you know, this is must be what it's like to be the Rolling Stones every single day. So still in our makeup and we had people running around and, Excellent. you know, getting our good side. And well, Mickey's, every side's Mickey's good side, of course. But. No so, makeup required. <laughs> the dangerously attractive Mickey Dunn, yes, we know about that. <laughs> um, Dangerous. So, um, tell tell us a little bit about Bayana. Then, how did this all come together? What, what I mean, what what what's the big interest in in this in this type of uh, music? Where did that come from? Is that something that you were brought up with, or what? it started off with um, me moving to Brazil many mm. many years ago? and falling madly in love with Brazilian music. And I think mm. it was Brazilian music that made me also fall in love with music. I'd always yeah. listened to music, love music, but I never felt it so mm. strongly as I did. How, how old were you when I moved there? How old were you when you went there? Um, I must have been about 18 or 19. All right, okay, yeah. So it's about four years ago. Mm -mm. <laughs> I've had a hard paper round, Roland. <laughs> <laughs> so when I came along to today, honestly, we look, we look really prepubescent this morning. <laughs> oh, you can't say that before nine o'clock. Yeah, you say so, we're, up, we're, we're all yeah, 20 we're years old, we've just got 40 years of experience. Next Nosferatu film. <laughs> so I, I, I fell in love with Brazilian music there, and I've always had this urge to perform. And before I started doing music, I was doing stand up comedy. And right. I even became a clown. I went to Paris and trained with Philippe Gaulier in Paris and hated everything about comedy. And every time I was performing comedy, I was always bringing music into it. Till somebody said to me one day, well, you know, it sing is music, obviously yeah. what you yeah. love to do. And, and I thought, well, I'm going to follow my passion for Brazilian music. 
whether it's niche, whether people like it or not. So I was like, we're putting a band together. So I decided to start this band yeah. and I put some feelers out and I thought, if I'm going to do this, I want the best musicians. I want people at the top of their game. So enter stage right, Mickey Don. She ends up with me. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to go for the gag then. Right. I thought you were going to go for the gag. I want the best musicians in the world, but no, I ended up no, with no, him. No, 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 no. I've done no, that okay. too many times. Yeah. I've been told that many times. We don't speak about that guy. I've been told off about that one. So, um, you know, Mickey's work. He's a beautiful, accomplished gypsy mm. jazz guitarist. We had V Don. Well, that's, that's, how he and I, that's how he and I met. That was. Oh, okay. That was when Dario, friend of friend of mine from Italy, was over, and he was playing mm -hmm. over at the uh, where were where were we? I can't remember, Mickey. Where was it? I think it was Frodsham, mate. Frodsham. It was. It was Frodsham. Yeah. 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 So, so because uh, Brazilian music, it's like bossa nova sounds very simple, but it's mm. extremely mm. complex oh, God, yeah. and, and difficult. The rhythms are very. Mm. And uh, samba, it's a it's a very difficult music to mm. play well. So you mm. have to be very good at what you, you do. And mm. um, Jesse Egan, who plays bass, mm. he was one of the most in-demand session bass players. Mm. And Vidar Norheim, he used to be in Wave Machines, those alt-pop darlings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he had very much yeah. a successful career with mm. them. And... Um, it just kind of grew from there. We were a four piece to begin with, and then mm. we had drums. So Vidal went on vibes. So we got Tilo Pienbal, who's mm. a fantastic jazz guitarist, mm. uh, jazz drummer, sorry. Mm. And then, you know, I was just lucky to have mm. these guys to, you know, to I think initially, yeah, we, we, we were all available for rehearsals and stuff, you know, for mm. Laura wanted to feel about with the music and then we were all able for rehearsals mm -hmm. and that turned into we've got a gig in two months or something you know You're right yeah to four people at yeah a corporate event you know so that was like i think she lassoed us into the whole <laughs> process really. you, mean, you mean you mean the offer of money <laughs> well that was that as well yeah that yeah. the, the last who called the dollar the, here still the dude cross a few palms but it Good. was it was funny in the beginning because you know, I'd always performed in, in some fashion, whether that mm. be doing terrible stuff up comedy or, you mm. know, a, a bit of clowning. But for me, the the performance wasn't what phased me. Mm. It was the first day I remember walking in and having to sing in front mm. of mm -hmm. all these musicians. That, for me, I remember the first day I was so, mm. so starstruck by their musicality <laughs> and thinking what am i going to do they're going to all pack up and walk out the door and think <laughs> we're not involved in this airbrain scheme fair enough but well clearly they later clearly they didn't here we are uh, how long ago was that then it was three three years yeah. ago three maybe three and a bit three years and a bit ago. years but there's been COVID in the way so that, that that's mm. covered our plans for world domination unfortunately but <laughs> scuppered <laughs> everybody's started. plans <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, then, so what we're we going to start with? What's your first tune? We should start with the, the first song that we did together. This was a song that Mickey and I wrote together. Cool. Called The Birds and the Bees, because obviously what we do is Brazilian, but it's heavily influenced by Mickey's style of guitar, mm. Django, the gypsy jazz vibe. So. Mm. This was a song where... It's not the Italian connection, isn't it? Yeah, I'll tell the story. So I I actually came up with the th the tune and the the harmony for it when I was mm. in uh, Sicily. All right. Sabocca. In, in, ho in holiday in, in Sabocca. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I know it. <laughs> I know it. Yeah. So I was just by that um, restaurant, cafe bar from The Godfather. Yeah. Staying in a hotel up on the top yep. of the hill, it was, yep. it was at the pool. It was amazing. It was really inspirational, and the tune sort of just came to me. So, and I've written written the, the melody. Well, I whistled it into my phone because <laughs> I was in the pool, and then, and then, 
I sent it back to Laura and I was like, I've written this tune, see what you can do with it. And it was really quite slow and she, she bossed it up and had the right. lyrics. And it, and it worked out really, it was quite quick, wasn't it, when it mm. came together? It was like, Laura got it really quickly and all that. So mm. uh, it doesn't contain any Italian reference, but that was where it was born. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, a good place, a good place to have it yeah. born. Yeah, it's a great place. Yeah. And it's and it's interesting as well as when I heard it instantly, mm. I I knew what it what it was supposed to be. Mm. I knew yeah. the lyrics and it and it all just it was like it came from above. So it was <laughs> one of those where we were just completely and utterly yeah in sync. It was we might as well have been sat next to each other writing it because it just worked so Brilliant. well. And we've not released this song yet, but this is. The contender for the album. Yeah. Okay. Let's have a listen. This is called Birds and the Bees. <laughs> Sweet chestnut trees, they both 
Nice. I can just see you there sitting in the pool. See you sitting there in the pool. <laughs> <whispering out. Yeah. laughs> so um, how, do you, how, how do you go about writing? Do you, I mean, you wrote that between you and obviously the, sort of, you know, Mickey came to you with the, the melody. Now, do you not only work just the two of you or do you work with the other guys as well? We've worked, um, it's a very sort of collegiate a approach. We wrote another one, the three of us all together, mm. Vidar, Mickey and I, that was Miso Loco. And, and we were approaching songwriting that way that people were going, here's something, here's something mm. else. And then mm. it was like ready, steady, cook. Kind of, <laughs> I bring this, I bring that, and then see what we can come up with. Right. <laughs> but it was actually the lockdown that sort of, forced us to approach things differently because suddenly we couldn't gig and we couldn't mm. you know go out and perform and do what we loved mm. and everyone was sitting around and so that was why um jesse and i our, our bass player we were having a chat about it and we were like oh i want to do this and i want to do that and he said should we just get into the studio mm. and let's just have a play around and mm. so we started doing that two days a week over a period of months. And mm. and it was great the way we did it because we started to develop our sound then, I think, wasn't it? Because mm. whereas before everyone would go, well, this bit, this bit, mm. then it became, as I said, this collegiate ap approach, this mm. real collaboration. It wasn't just, oh, you do the music, you do the lyrics. Yeah. Suddenly it was completely enmeshed and we would start coming up with a riff and then I'd go, oh, that reminds me of this and what about mm. this lyric? And mm. then we would play something and i go, oh, let's do it a little bit jazzy or I heard this track the other day and mm. I wrote a lyric and just went, oh, mm, that doesn't quite fit there. And so as it went on, we started to find our voice and we were like, let's just write and write and write and write and write. And write. I think mm. from, a, from a lyrical standpoint as well, look, we we sort of know what what direction Laura's going to take things, like the way she'll you can prepare a melody mm. in her own in, for what her her writing style. I think we seem to know, so so we we can invariably leave the lyrics to Laura mm. um, for for a bit of it. I mean, Jesse pitched in quite a bit, but personally i know if i write a tune i can hear her singing it immediately just from doing loads of gigs together you know yeah yeah, yeah. The regular gig, i can yeah. hear a phrase in immediately and and i'll know whether the melody that i'm going to approach will, will mm. fit her, her phrasing if you like you know? yeah and yeah what we put it together it's always in my key <laughs> it's yeah. like they, they know it's like we never really have to change it when i go oh can we try it in a different key can we do it in this yeah. we always go back to the key it's written it. So that's why. <laughs> that's interesting. You know, we have started to kind of, where else mm. do we want to do this? And, and now that's important to us to develop our style, our mm. voice, our unique. That's know. our goal at the moment, to get our, our sound, if you like. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's difficult to become recognisable, isn't it? That's, that's one of the things that, you know, no one can really pin down. It's, yeah, it's a tricky one. I mean, in particular with things like Bossa, because, I mean, you know, you, you, you say... If you mention Bossa Nova to anybody, you can almost guarantee the first thing they'll mention will be Girl from Ipanema, um, yeah. which is a, a beautiful song. And I'm, I'm a huge fan of, uh, of, of Jobim's work. I think his, 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 his structures are beautiful. I think his, his harmonies are just fantastic. But, but it's a bit like in the sense that sort of um, jazz is kind of watered down for the general public. And the way um, Ipanema, although it's a great song, has been performed, is also been kind of watered down. Do you see yourselves exactly. being more, more sort of roots Brazilian, shall we say? Do you know what I mean? I think, yeah, I think so. I think what, what one of my, not both bears, one of my things is to get Bossa Nova across to people in exactly the opposite way. Mm. You know, I don't want... Because that song is amazing, you know, and, and yeah. like you say, it's been covered that many times. That yeah. It's become, it has become a bit of a, 
cliche if you like. Yeah. It's considered the the supermarket music. Yeah, exactly. And that's why when I said at the at the top of the show, mm -hmm. people think it's very simple mm -hmm. oh, music yeah. that it or muzak, you know. Yeah, music. yeah, yeah. But as you say, musically and you know, it's so constructually, you know. it's oh, it's geez, yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. It's incredible and. The I, I, that we play. I think one note it's samba beautiful. is such a, an amazing structure. I mean, it's just so oh, beautifully put yeah. together. The, the the counterpoint between the, mm -hmm. the incredibly simple melody in the in the verse and then the exactly. the, the refrain just being very complicated yeah. with very simple mm -hmm. chords behind it. I mean, it's just the balance yeah. is beautiful. The juxtaposition. That's that's the whole thing. That's what well part of our thought is. We want to juxtapose against the original image of Bossa, You know, so yeah. we can. And, and also, we juxtaposed it by coming from a, a freezing cold River Mersey. From, you know, <laughs> so we couldn't be more opposite, really. But yeah. We still bring that. We still bring that vibrancy. That's that's part of the thing, you know. It's not yeah. just like, oh, they're doing boss, but they're, but they're all scouts, you know. But we don't want to. That's not the thing. It's not some sort of ploy or some sort of scouts and over. Yeah, it's not scouts yeah. and over, is it? It's yeah. boss. It's boss. <laughs> it's <a> boss <laughs> and over. What's that? What's that? And so, so we want to sort of add our own thing into it, yeah. whereas it's not just like, it's not a gimmick, they're great, this is great, uh, and mm. we still want to have the essence of Bossa, it's got to be there, you know. Just, yeah. And also, like you mentioned, you know, the, the one next Samba, and, mm. and there's another one called Desafinado, which is yeah. out of tune, and yeah. those songs, you know, they're making fun at themselves mm. on it, you know, this is the one note Samba, and yeah. It's just like, yeah, you know, every note in Christendom is in that it's everything song. Everything but one note. Yeah, yeah exactly. Finado is so yeah. out of tune. Is so. I, I think. I think. Tr triste is triste is the one, isn't it? That's that's. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a monster. That's an absolute monster. Um, but yeah, but there's a lot right. of humour, even though it's bittersweet oh, yeah. and talks things about love and beauty and the sea. Mm. It's, it's very light and. And I think people from Rio de Janeiro, the Cariocas, mm. they're like the Scousers, you know, <laughs> they've got that. Or the Scousers are the Latins of, <laughs> of England. Uh, this is a discussion. Could, this is a discussion that could go horribly wrong. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> the, but the interesting thing is, do you, do you know do you know the name Earl Oakin? Earl Oakin. Uh, yes, Paul. I've seen. I've right. seen Earl Oakin uh, perform at Sadell's. Right. Well, I had him on the show. Yeah. I had him on the show um, last year, and he, yeah, he's he's, he's a huge fan of Bossa Nova. He's he's coming to yeah. Leeds. He's coming to Leeds actually sometime in the next couple of months. So oh, okay. I saw him there last year as well. But he, he um, when I started this, my friend took me to see. Uh, oh right. He played at Zadell's at Crazy Cox. Yeah, yeah. In Zadell's, yeah. and my friend was like, "You have to come and see this. Let yeah. this be an inspiration for you." That because I was like, "Oh, well, people really want to hear this music." And then we went to see him, and I was like, "Yeah, definitely." <laughs> he, he's extraordinary, but but he 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 was saying something. When I was talking to him about this, and he was saying about how um, the whole notion of the girl from Ipanema is a bit weird, really, because it's a little bit sordid, you know. This yeah. <laughs> two yeah. middle -aged, two middle aged guys eyeing our message. Looking at a young girl on the beach. Exactly, yeah. it's not exactly pure and innocent, is it? Vinicius Gimoraes actually hated the English translation. Yes, yeah, hated it. Because it was tall and tanned and young, and, and for precisely that reason. But yeah, in exactly. Portuguese, um, all the uh, boys that my children that was can... beautiful thing, full of grace, and it was yeah. to mirror, um, you know, Our Lady's Prayer. So yeah, it was this beautiful <laughs> image, full of grace, and it was. How you can know. you trust a how can you trust a lyricist called Norman Gimble? I mean, for God's sake, it's not. <laughs> you know, Ooh, it's, you know your audience. <laughs> you it's, know your I, it's it's one of those things. It's always struck me that it sounds like a made-up name from a Monty Python sketch. You know, it's, I mean Norman Gimble. It's it's just. Um, <laughs> anyway, on that note, let's go on to another of yours. Come on, what, what are we going to do next? Next so song. I think we should do Paradise. Yeah. So taking things, moving things on, then this was the start of our journey, finding our own sound mm. on our own style and yeah. writing mm. something with a joyful, playful bossa feel, but 
put in our little stamp on it. And this song was written about, well, the things we were all missing hmm. during lockdown. It's just the joys of being with friends and falling in love and having a few drinks and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how many songs have been written over the last year and a half in that vein. Thousands. Yeah. <laughs> and will never get performed. <laughs> But I guarantee there won't be many Bossa Nova ones. This is called Paradise. This is called Paradise. Cool. It's a play. Plim, plim. Drinks are flowing. Oh, yeah. Chin, chin. People dance. A boogie, boogie. You can smile. Gucci, Gucci. Let the good time flow. Cool, because it's good actually. It's, it's like that because I like the, like the thing about that. The difference in that and every other song that's been written about the, the isolation COVID is that it doesn't mention COVID or the isolation, <laughs> which is brilliant. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, best yeah. of luck with that. Want to do cool. outside, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, look at the positives. That's cool. Um, what well, what about um when, when you look look at the lyrics because they are um, I mean every every person. I mean I've this is about the I think this is episode. 66 no 78 now and i think every songwriter i've spoken to has said um that it's harder to write happy songs than sad songs yeah sad songs are easy mm -hmm. they you know the, the bluesy feel that you, you woke up this morning etc cetera, etc cetera. you know all all those sort of yeah. things are very easy but bossa is an essentially for me an, an essentially happy sound <laughs> Is that difficult? Is that difficult li lyrically? I find it easier to easier. write happy songs than 
sad yeah. songs. And I think, um, you know, the very definition of Bayana for us is Bayana is joyful. It's passion. Yeah. It's yeah. fearlessness. It's the the joy and the beauty of of Brazil. So mm. happy songs is in a happy place, but writing sad songs is when it's you kind of feel quite exposed. Mm. I think writing that. And, I think sort of to to be an entertainer, mm. you you want to entertain people, don't you? You want to make them happy, and mm. and I part of me right now. Mm. Whether this is just a Liverpool thing, I don't know. When you're on stage, you want to make people happy, like that's part yeah, of the thing, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, um, and you know, a sense of humour and all the rest of it, you know, mm. and being famous for, for that in the city, but like. It's harder to sell a, a ballad, surely. I would have thought. They well, have the, the, they the, have the interesting thing is, though, is it what what it seems what seems to be coming out of what what you're saying, which is what what I, I I had in mind really, is the fact that because the music is essentially happy music, it's very difficult to write the sad one. Whereas in in well, a different in, in a different form, like in say the blues, as an extreme example, yeah. it's kind of hard to write a cheerful one. So in yeah, fact, yeah, the, totally the, cool. the actual form of the music, the, the melodic nature and the harmonic nature of it points you in a certain direction to come out with happy songs. Well, which leads us to our next song, which in a minute... But, but, a but, seamless, but, seamless link. That was seamless. Like that it was good, there. that. was impressive, yeah. man, impressive. You, you don't know what you've done there. But yeah, you're right, that's exactly it. But, but um, I think a part of, like, I don't speak Portuguese. I don't mm. know who, who, who you do. Obviously, Laura does fluently, but they do sound a lot like bouncy tunes and happy, and we imagine mm. the beach and all the rest of it. Yeah. But a lot of the, there's a lot of melancholy involved, isn't yeah. there? In it? There's mm. lots of melancholy involved in the lyrics, and obviously, mm. we don't understand them. We just hear these amazing melodies, extensions yeah. on the chords, you know, and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And, and all the rest, you know, all these beautiful harmonies. Yeah. Yeah. And I hear them. Before, mm. and because I don't know what the lyrics are, and I just go, Oh my god, they're just so clever! Like, <laughs> and like Laura explained to me, I didn't know this that originally uh, they were considered sort of the rebels of the time musically, mm. yeah, within yeah. the yeah. within the sort of classic. It was the hippies were suddenly creating all of this yeah. music, this bossa nova music, yeah. becoming popular, but but they were actually almost rebelling against what, what was traditionally done, Brazilian. Traditional music, if you like, sort of mm. classically, I think. So they were doing, going against the grain, making it, mm. simplifying it by sound. Mm. I think, but harmonically, it was far more advanced than oh, anything. Absolutely, yeah. It's phenomenal. But a lot of things in, in, the, in the rest of Europe and all that, you know, so, um, and like they poked fun at, 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 at their elders, if you like, with that de mm. art, that was like the other tune. So mm, yeah, oh, yeah. We, we don't really know much about music. We can only write songs out of tune, but you know, but listen to the harmony and that, you know, you've yeah. got an, an, another tone of the story, you know. Um, mm. So, so yeah, that's one of the things about the, the music. It's the melancholy is there, mm. regardless of the rhythm. Yeah, if you like, that's interesting. Yeah. Lyrically, you know, you know, um, but you know, again, like you say, it's it's still. Um, uh, an addiction to sounds the rhythm of it. it, it it's yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's up te it's up tempo for a kickoff in the main. You know, yeah. it, it's. Yeah. I, I would imagine you know the the, the the average is faster than the average pop song. You know, um, I and, 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 so. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and therefore, you've got that that thing that's pushing you forward all the time. And um, yes. because I mean, I you know, I agree with entirely what you said before about like you know you, you want to entertain people and you want to. Uh, make people happy and all that. And that all makes total sense to me. But then I, I find myself thinking, yeah, but what about people like, you know, um, great songs like um, Ain't No Sunshine When She's Gone? It's actually quite melancholy, yeah. even though it's a positive yeah. song. And it's not up-tempo, but it's a brilliant song. You but know, you, the, can be, you can be entertained by being moved. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. You know, and it, it's it's kind of when you go... To see a show and for me it's 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 a communion it's an exchange mm. of energies if you like and mm. we're sort of taking you by the hand and, and leading you through that and the idea is you know you take people to a place and to make somebody feel deep emotion can be a lot 
it can be very profound when you've taken them to a place of fun and happiness because mm -hmm. you've opened up that energy if you like and then yeah taking them to that melancholic moment mm -hmm. which we do in the show and, and that's the moment i always find funny enough i personally always find most tricky to navigate mm -hmm. because i'm you know wanting to keep yay you know yeah. let's keep the, <laughs> keep the party going and you know to, to bring that down but um you can find deep pleasure in deep melancholy yeah yeah absolutely well. yeah yeah and that's yeah that's all part of kind of the whole yeah i think yeah i mean <laughs> that's songwriting <laughs> I, always, I always liken it to you know you know we go to big arena concerts and stuff mm. and, um, there's always a couple of three depends on who you're watching mm. there's always a couple of three tunes where everyone goes to the bar yeah <laughs> or the toilet you know so, so we spoke about this and i said any of them tunes where we have that yeah, we've got to make it as, as as hypnotic or something as possible, because we want to avoid and see how many don't go don't go to the bar or don't. You know. <laughs> but during lockdown, it was easy. Or post lockdown, because everywhere was table service, so I thought we'd cracked it. No one's going to the bar. Look. Yeah, so it's the, it's the we, we apply the the <laughs> Our song and our set depends on the strength of your bladder. <laughs> yeah. I'll bear that in mind on Sunday. Uh, <laughs> that's a little plug for any of you listening in the in the Manchester area because uh, Bayana, the stri the stripped down version of Bayana, will be performing in Stockport <laughs> on on Sunday afternoon from three o'clock at the Baker's Vault. And um, now you, look, that will be you, Laura. I take it, yes. Yes. And that will be little on me, but it, you're not with us, are you, Mickey? I'm otherwise engaged, unfortunately. Yeah, so who have we who've we got on guitar? We've got the uh, unbelievable uh, John Wheatcroft oh, on guitar, yeah. who is a phenomenal... Yeah, phenomenal. I've, I've, I've seen some of his stuff on, on YouTube, actually. He's, he's a serious yeah. player, isn't he? He's amazing, yeah. And he, yeah. He's a, he writes for guitar, guitar Techniques magazine. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Amongst yeah. others, he's written books yeah. himself. Yeah. He teaches around the country, he's yep. in demand as a, as a, as a um, clinician and all that. So, he, but you know, he's, yeah. he's amazing. So, I wish yeah. I could go. Well, next maybe, time. maybe, maybe next, time. Yeah. next time. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, um, next song. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> so, we can do Voodoo Man or. Have we got time for two more, do you think? Yes, 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 two more. Okay. Well, if we're going to do two more, we'll do... We were talking earlier about finding our voice and our style, and yeah. we were like, just write, just write, just write. Mm. And we wrote a song called Voodoo Man, and, and we released this, and it was kind of a departure again from what we normally do. But mm. um, our last three songs were produced by Snowboy, yeah. Mark Cockgrove. Yeah, yeah. He is just an incredible, accomplished musician in his mm. own right, but a, a wonderful producer who's worked with Adele, Amy Winehouse, Mark Ronson, Jamiroquai. In terms of Brazil, mm. he's worked with Eto Moreira and yeah. Latin, Latin wow. America's worked with Flaco Jimenez. And absolutely yeah. incredible. Yeah. So... The, the songs that we brought him, he, as well as having his own, his own, yeah, Snowboy in the, yeah. the Latin section, you know, and it was beautiful the way he wove his golden thread through the morn and, and linked to create this okay. sound. And we're working on an album now yeah. with him. Um, we have some incredible surprises coming up on that album, which unfortunately Zip. I can't talk about at the moment. <laughs> And you think, well, why mention it then? Because it's darn exciting. Well, it's, so it's, follow us. You have to build up, build, build, build up the tension. Build up the tension. All will be revealed. Excellent. Um, but Snowboy's working on the album with us now. and So this was one that we wrote that was called Voodoo Man that was inspired musically, but it was, it was our Bond theme almost. Yeah, <laughs> it was, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So this is Voodoo Man. Okay. We've been expecting you. <laughs> <laughs> if I have my cat now as well, she normally appears. <laughs> Excellent. I like the dramatic finishing chord. Excellent, Mickey. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Actually, talking about James Bond, I accidentally bumped into something on 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 TV the other day, flicking through the channels, and it was one of these. Uh, is it called the Porn Show? Where it, this is like American porn shop. Oh, no? I roll. I wondered when we get round. To yes, it. I. I, I, I <laughs> but but there, but there was is a guy walking into a shop with this guitar case, right? And he put this guy in his sort of mid late seventies, and he puts a guitar case in the top, and he takes up and does it. And the guy says, "Oh wow, nice sixties Strat." And um, is it? Uh, sorry, this is aimed at, at Mickey here or any other guitarist listening. And uh, the guy said, um, "Oh nice." He said, "Were you a pro player?" And he said, uh, "Yeah, I was a session musician in the sixties." And he says, "Who have you played with?" He said, well, Tom Jones, Frank Sinatra, Dusty Springfield. And, and he oh, reeled it. And he took this wadge of paper out of his out of his bags, like a, a stack like that of A4 sheets saying who he'd played with. And it was a guy called Vic Flick. Vic Flick, yeah. Yeah, yeah. From, the, from the 60s. And the guy, the bloke said to him, you mean to tell me this is the Fender that played the ding, 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 yeah. ding. And it played the yeah. James Bond. This is the guitar that played it. Went for $50,000. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Where'd that be plenty of Oh, I thought it was just lovely. The way he sort of kind of quite almost modestly took out this wadge of paper. And I, after, it I, I, yeah. after I saw it, I, I, I checked it up on Wikipedia to see how many people he actually did play with. And it's phenomenal. Yeah. 
It is utterly Everyone, phenomenal. Everyone, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I always thought that Vic Flick was probably a made-up name, like Norman Gimbel, but um, clearly not. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, enough of my idle chatter. So I've, I've put your uh, your website up at the bottom there. Um, so what, where where else? And um, I've, I've given a plug for the bakers. Um, where else are you playing in the in the near future? Where can people get to see you? We're playing at Matt and Fred's in Manchester. Oh, are you? Got, I, yeah, I can't remember the date offhand. So it'll be on the on the website or on our social media we're yep. playing at alexander's in chester in chester yep yep we're playing at the hub in lichfield um we play at frederick's as a the full band we also have a a smaller acoustic trio called we call it baby Bayana, and we play in <laughs> every every saturday every saturday, every saturday. um we have some London dates coming up that we're going to announce in the next couple of weeks. Cool. It's all on the well. site anyway. So, so, yeah, it's all on the it's site, a, right? So if anybody goes to the site, they can find it where you are. But oh, in the north, uh, yeah, it's um, Chester, Manchester, yeah. Liverpool, Lichfield is a little bit further afield. Yeah. Not sure where Lichfield is, Have you played Mountain Friends before? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice, That's isn't it? Well, yeah. Last time? We last played there in December. All right. Matt and Fred's. If you see us advertise as playing in Matt and Fred's, get yourself down there because <laughs> we always just blow the roof off, don't we? It's, it's just. It's always full, yeah. Woo! It all sells out. Yeah. That's good, 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 good. Brilliant. Yeah, it's always good. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing the next week, actually. Um, it's a good one. It's a good one. One of my faves. Um, so, anything else you'd like to uh, inform us about? When is the album likely to be out, do you reckon? Um, it's going to be towards the latter part of the year. Right, okay. Because we're trying to obviously combine schedules and Snowboy is also mm. the percussionist for Lisa Stansfield. Right. So yeah. he has his own group. So there's a lot of festivals and all that coming up. And we'll be gigging as well. So we're trying to do it in between everyone's gigging. Yeah. So realistically, it's probably going to be around September, I would say. It was going to be. About now, originally, but it's just the hold ups and hold up and hold up, you know. Yeah. Everybody's so. the same, yeah. Everybody's mm -hmm. the same with that. It's got to be as good as it can be from us, that's the main thing. So, excellent, excellent. It'll be worth the wait. <laughs> I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. Um, so listen, thanks for coming in, guys. Um, what are you going to finish off with? Our new single, the new single that'll Sal have to be done. Okay, Sal Laura Mickey, take it away. Saudade, chama 
Thunderous applause. Sort of. you, blew, you threw me there, Mickey. I thought you were going for the big finish earlier on, so I switched over onto the other view. Nope, then you carried on for a bit more. <laughs> sort of um, a bit premature there, but we don't want to talk about that. Um, so, <laughs> thanks, guys. Thanks for uh, for joining us. Thanks for sharing your music Thank with you. us. Thanks for having us. Great fun. Obrigada. And we shall, um, well, I shall see you on Sunday. And, um, see you Sunday. Yeah. So keep us posted. We'll do. Come thanks, on. thanks. Come on back and see us again. Absolute Thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Thanks, Ciao. guys. Ciao. Buon noite. Buon noite. Buon noite. Buon noite. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, that was good. I enjoyed that. So that's it for this week from me. Um, I'll be back with you next week. In the meantime, if you're uh, around on Sunday, do come and see the. I don't know. This must be the mini mini Bayana. I'm not sure, but uh, it, there'll be Laura and uh, and John Weecroft, who is a phenomenal player. Check him out on on the internet. And um, on Saturday night, again uh, aimed at the Manchester crowd, I'll, I'll be playing at the Crown in uh, in Heaton Moor with the, with the band. So um, just to uh, remind you, what that sounds like, I'm going to leave you with um, the um, the promo for our album. So, in the meantime, before next week, I shall see you around. Look after yourselves and stay safe. I've been thinking by where I've been The places I've visited The things I've seen Made decisions by people I've met Some more good ones some I regret Don't know the future Can't change the past That's how it is That's how it is